there comes a time where most players cut, drive, pull the same. And what separates players who do very well versus those who don't is, is what happens in between the years. And books get written about this. It can be, it can be complicated. However, someone uh, told me a nice bit of advice once which I thought was useful in that they said, in every game, approach it with tactics and a mindset which will give you the greatest probability of scoring runs. So firstly, let's talk mindset. Have, have a think about times you've done well and think about how you were thinking. Identify that mindset firstly and then have the guts to take that mindset into every game you play and in that way you will be giving yourself the greatest probability of scoring runs. Approach or tactics. Ask yourself, what approach or tactics work well for me? What approach or tactics will give me the best chance of scoring runs? Well, this is a common question. A lot of cricketers aren't quite sure how to approach an innings. Well, there's two ways of doing this. One is you play the ball on its merits all the time. And this is a, a common method and it works beautifully. You simply, not thinking about any shots you'd like to play, you are simply watching the ball out the hand and trusting what you see and playing the ball on its merits. And this works beautifully for many professional players as well. So it's a great low risk method. Another way of going about it is playing the ball on its merits and trusting your instincts until you get to a point where you'd like to dominate or move the game along and you may consider a more expansive game. Now the key here is think about what shots are on the table. Are you willing to loft it? Are you you're going to go for uh, chase a few wider ones now or maybe sweep? The, the key is to think about shots you're willing to play. Think about the zone or area in which these, sh which these balls land and then it's all about discipline in the fact that you only go for those shots when it's in that zone. You are, very importantly, you're not letting, the t if it doesn't land in that area, it's so important that you can still play any other shot on its merits. That, that thinking of shots you'd like to play doesn't influence any delivery which lands outside that zone. When it lands in that zone, you commit to it 100%, you don't hold back. If you had to look back at almost every one of your innings, is, there, there, I'm sure there were times which were, were quite tough. Then there were periods which were a lot easier. And, and many innings is, in cricket is like a roller coaster. But there's tough bits and easier bits, and it just flows like that all the time. So many cricketers lose their wicket in that tough period. They, they just feel like they can't score runs. They can't rotate the strike. They can't move the game along and they begin to panic, they begin to think about shots they'd like to play in the future, they start to worry about maybe what their teammates are thinking. The key here is to realize that this is a normal part of any innings, it's the tough period. And now, what I'd say to this is, these tough periods don't last very long. It's, uh, it's very rare for that tough period to continue for you know, more than 15 overs. So what I'm saying to you is, in that tough period, identify, there's a tough period on my innings, I'm going to get through this because in five overs time, there's a, there's a nervous leg spin around the corner with two, two long hops. When it does get easier, it is, it is so essential to concentrate and work your routines exactly the same as when it was tough. Don't take the foot off the pedal just because it's getting a bit easier. You probably find the best players in the world are, are hungry for runs. They, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, it's, it's never enough. They want more and more and more. And, and this is key, this hunger for the big score, because if you are satisfied with 20s, 30s, and 40s, what happens is, yeah, you get that score, and that's okay. However, the next week you run out, and the week after that you nick off, and your average now is probably 15, 20. The best players in the world average. 
50, 60 because they, they maybe miss out one, they miss out two, they get a big one not out, and that big one not out takes care of the times you miss out, and, and that big one wins games for your team. If there is nothing like a massive score, a big hundred, which will help your team win their game, and it will help your average, and it will help you get selected into, uh, into these high honor teams.